if we have an LTI system with an input in the form of a unit step and an impulse response in the form of a unit step, how do we find the output? So essentially we're asking for the step response. And there are two ways of doing this. You can either find the convolution of the input with the impulse response, or you can simply take the impulse response and integrate it to find the step response, because the step response, by definition, is the integral of the impulse response. So we could do either. We could either integrate the impulse response, or we could find the convolution of the impulse response with the input. So here I, I will um, do both. I will show you how to do the convolution integral and the normal integration, and you should get the same answer. So, y of t equals the definition of the convolution integral. It'll be x of alpha multiplied by h of um, t minus alpha, d alpha. Now, x is simply the unit step, and h is the unit step. So we can just replace x and h with our unit step function. Now remember, both of these unit steps, they simplify to exactly one. So I can replace both of these with one. But what each of these does is it changes the respective limits. So this one will change the lower limit to zero, and this unit step will change the upper limit to t. So the integral now becomes the integral from 0 to t of 1 d alpha. This is on the condition that t has to be greater than 0. Because if t was less than 0, then there would be no integral. So this has to be greater than this. So if we carry on the integration, the integral of 1 d alpha is simply alpha, and that just gives you t. But because we said that t has to be greater than 0, then we need to then multiply this result by u of t. So u of t is our way of saying that t has to be greater than 0 for this result to be non-zero. So we've just found the output. Now, that's the, the final answer. That's the output. It's t u of t, or another way of writing that is just to say a ramp function, r of t. And we found this by calculating the convolution. So we convolve the input with the um, uh, impulse response. Now, remember we said, because the input is actually a unit step, we can find the step response simply by integrating the impulse response. So I'll do that just to show you that we get the same answer. So we can say the step response is the integral. Now watch out, when you integrate, you don't integrate till infinity. You only integrate until the same point in time that you're looking for here. So you only integrate until t. So what we're in uh, integrating is the impulse response, h of alpha. And that's the integral from minus infinity to t of u of alpha, d alpha. And again, u of alpha, its value is exactly 1. 
when this is zero. So it, it has the effect of changing that limit. Okay? But this will only be true if t is greater than zero. So we just remind ourselves here that t has to be greater than zero. So we're now integrating from zero to t of one d alpha, and we get exactly the same result. So we're exactly um, in the same place we were a minute ago. So we have our final result, t u of t. Where did the u of t come from? It comes from our recognition that t has to be greater than zero. So you can see that whichever way we do it, we get the same result. So we need to choose, when answering a question like this, which approach is less work. So I would suggest you just integrate the impulse response, but by all means you can carry out the convolution integration.